the product rule, the square bracket notation, and examples. The product rule states that the derivative of f of x times g of x equals f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. We put the undifferentiated parts in parentheses and the differentiated parts in square brackets. We can then draw a picture of the product rule as seen here. If we remove the functions and simply write the parentheses and square brackets, we get this. The product rule now becomes a fill-in-the-blank problem. We use this notation as a way to keep up with the bookkeeping of the product rule. All we have to do is keep up with what goes where. We now illustrate the use of the square brackets in general. Consider the derivative of the product of functions f of x and g of x. We know the form of the derivative. We just need to put the right things in the right places. We start with the derivative of the first function, f of x, and put it in the first pair of square brackets. Next, we simply write the second function, g of x, and put it in the first pair of parentheses. Now we add to this the first function, f of x, which we put in the second pair of parentheses, times the derivative of the second function, g of x, which we put in the second pair of square brackets. That is, the derivative of the product of two functions is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Consider the product of 6x squared minus 4x minus 7 and 5x to the 9th plus 8x to the 5th plus 12. This is a product of a pair of polynomials. Since we know how to differentiate polynomials, the product rule allows us to compute the derivative of this. The square bracket notation gives us the form of the derivative. We now fill in the blanks. We need the derivative of the first, which is 6 times 2x minus 4 times 1 minus 0. Next, we write the second function. After the addition sign, we write the first function. Finally, we have the derivative of the second, which is 5 times 9x to the 8th plus 8 times 5x to the 4th plus 0. We now simplify the algebra a little but we still keep the pattern of the square brackets. For emphasis, we put a box around this version of the answer. Consider the product 5t cubed plus the square root of t times 6t squared minus 9t plus 1 divided by t. This involves two functions which are not polynomials, but we have seen them before. We must recall that the derivative of square root of x is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x, and the derivative of 1 divided by x is negative 1 divided by x squared. Notice that example 2 involves functions of t not functions of x. However, this does not matter and we can simply replace the x's with t's to get the needed derivatives. 
First, we know the form of the derivative since we will apply the product rule. We need the derivative of the first function. This is 15 t squared plus 1 divided by 2 times the square root of t. Next, we write the second. After the addition, we need to write the first function. Finally, we multiply by the derivative of the second, which is 12t minus 9 minus 1 divided by t squared. With the square brackets, we see where all of the parts of the derivative come from. Therefore, we do not attempt to simplify any further, and we put a box around the answer in its current form. We will now use the square bracket notation to find a pattern in the derivative of the product of more than two functions. Consider the product of three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. Since the product rule allows us to differentiate a pair of functions, we pair together the functions g and h and treat them, initially, as a single function. Now we apply the product rule to the product of the first function, f of x, and the second function, g of x times h of x. This gives the form of the derivative. Since the second function, g of x times h of x, is itself a product, we will have to apply the product rule to find the derivative of this part. This means that we will have a product rule within a product rule. Now, let's put the appropriate functions in the appropriate places. We start with the derivative of the first function, f of x. For this part of the product rule, we combined g and h together to form the second function, and so we write this next. After the addition, we write the first function, f of x. Now, we must multiply by the derivative of the second function, g of x times h of x. Since this is a product, we have the derivative of g times h plus g times the derivative of h. If we simplify a little, we get f prime of x times g of x times h of x plus f of x times g prime of x times h of x plus f of x times g of x times h prime of x. This form of the answer is suggestive of a more general pattern, so we put a box around it as our final answer. The square bracket notation makes it easy to see the pattern which results when we apply the product rule to the product of several functions. First, we have the original product rule, which states that the derivative of the product of two functions is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. We have just seen that the derivative of the product of three functions is the derivative of the first times the second two, plus the derivative of the second times the first and third, plus the derivative of the third times the first and second. That is, we write down the product of the three functions three times to form three groups. We differentiate the first function in the first group, differentiate the second function in the second group, differentiate the third function in the third group, and add the three groups together. A similar pattern holds for the derivative of the product of four functions. In fact, 
This pattern holds for the derivative of the product of any number of functions. The square bracket notation is useful in keeping up with what goes where when applying the product rule. It will also be useful in other rules of differentiation, so we will continue to use it. There's more square bracket notation to come.